In the months since the shooting at Rich Neck Elementary, all of Hampton Roads has been wondering how could a six year old get a gun then shoot another human being. But gunfire in a first grade classroom had actually happened before. Investigative reporter Chris Horn looks into the same questions back then surrounding violence at the hands of young children and what has changed since then. Chris? Tom, this case happened 23 years ago in a classroom near Flint, Michigan. It ended with not just someone wounded, but someone dead. I spoke with the prosecutor about finding justice in this case. It includes lessons learned, forgiveness, and the toll on the victim's family. It is unprecedented. It's unprecedented for us in this city. But sadly, not in this country. <laughs> 23 years ago this month, a Michigan first grader shot and killed classmate Kayla Rowland. The boy's father was in jail at the time. His mother would go to work every day an hour away near Detroit. So he was living with his uncle, a known drug dealer. He grew up in what I call a flop house. He lived in a drug house basically with his uncle and whoever his uncle invited over. Arthur Bush was the prosecutor back then. He says the gun was easy to find, especially for a six-year-old with a sweet tooth. The pistol was in a, in a shoe box with some candies and some coins, and it was on a bed. According to reports, the little boy was mad that Kayla wouldn't let him kiss her on the playground the day before. It was now up to Bush. What do I do with a six-year-old shooter? He interviewed the Michigan first grader. I sat across from him and he was coloring and he was drawing pictures of the Easter bunny and he started smiling at me and I realized that he didn't have two front teeth. And then we started talking about the tooth fairy. This kid believed in all that stuff. He could not understand what he held in his hand. He found the gun and then started twirling it on his finger like Wyatt Earp or something out of a Western movie, uh, which indicates that he probably saw that gun as a toy. I don't think at that age they really get that this is a deadly weapon. You can't prosecute a child who simply is unable to process mentally uh, the thoughts of committing a crime. But you can prosecute an adult. The uncle's roommate owned the gun. Bush charged him with involuntary manslaughter, plea deal, out of prison after two and a half years. The six-year-old boy is now a 29-year-old man, involved in a break-in at age 18, but with no known serious criminal history. And members of Kayla's family, I'll never forgive the guy, are on opposite ends of the forgiveness spectrum. But I forgive him and I really hope he's doing something with his life. Her mother, Veronica McQueen, advocated for stronger gun laws and was mentioned in First Lady Hillary Clinton's announcement for the Million Mom March. It was the largest protest against gun violence to that point. But in the years since, Parkland and Uvalde were just a few of the many K-12 school shootings. According to a database from security.org, 367 people have been killed. Another 1,105 were hurt since Kayla was killed in her classroom. McQueen never really recovered from losing her beloved Kayla and took her own life in 2017. For Bush, the gunshot at Richneck was an echo from 23 years ago. It brought back not just the pain, but the lessons learned. Wasn't the, the kid, it's the gun. So the question then is why did we have so many guns in America and why do we have, why are we so violent? Newport News needs to answer that question first. Arthur Bush says he's confident kids involved in violence at a young age can be rehabilitated. The Newport News boy involved in the Rich Neck shooting is currently getting medical care. So far, no one has been charged in that case. Chris Horn, 10 in your side.